us talk about crystal formation. In specific, the couple kind of structures that crystals can take when they are newly formed. The three main crystal structures are called euhedral, anhedral, and subhedral. Starting off with euhedral, also called idiomorphic or allomorphic crystal formations. This is when crystal forms with a lot of space and has ample area to form the characteristic crystal structure that you can see very well defined in this pyrite sample. It has kind of sharp defined faces and edges and again it takes that characteristic crystalline formation. Next up is anhedral, also known as xenomorphic or allotriomorphic. It's kind of the opposite of the euhedral with kind of undefined faces and edges and planes. This one is not pyrite like the other one, it is quartz, but when you think of quartz, you might think of the more defined faces with the kind of points. Like here is one of my quartz crystals with you can see a little bit more defined faces with a bit more reflective surfaces. This one is, I think, it looks fully euhedral to me. Another example here is another one of my quartz crystals with, again, you can see that very shiny defined face on here, and this is natural, this is not cut quartz. This happens when the crystal is grown in kind of more cramped quarters without the space to fully grow into the crystal structure. It has to compete with other forming crystals for space and ends up just becoming kind of cramped and undefined. And the final type of crystal formation is a subhedral. It's kind of like a mix of the two, honestly. This one, again, is pyrite. You can see there's structures of both euhedral and anhedral. There's some defined faces, like up here and here, but there's also just kind of a squished amalgamation of crystals contained within the same rock. This happens when there's some space for the crystals to form, but not enough that you get those very well-defined euhedral spaces. You get some, but you also get some kind of squished amalgamation. Now, obviously, there's other factors that affect the formation of crystals, things like temperature and pressure and other outside factors. So this isn't like a be-all end-all for crystal formation, but it is kind of a very brief basic overlook of some of the shapes that crystals can take during their formation.